Hey, I just wanted to talk today about the real Bethsaida that has been unearthed by the Sea of Galilee, um, also known as Lake Kinneret or Gennesaret, several names that it goes by. I thought that you would really be excited to hear this. Um, I've talked about this dig prior to this last year and now they've excavated some more interesting details that are really fascinating. So Haaretz reported, archeologists may have found traditional home of Jesus' apostles by the Sea of Galilee. Now there's something new that they found, so that's why I'm revisiting this dig. Below an early church in the village they think was Bethsaida, archeologists uncovered a sacred wall that couldn't have been from Peter the Apostle's house. However, the next one to it could have been from his house. By the Sea of Galilee, smack beneath the apse of a Byzantine period basilica in what may have been the lost village of Bethsaida, Archaeologists have found remnants of a wall that predates the church. The builders of the ancient church may have believed that the wall, which they seem to have venerated and carefully ensconced below the apse of their edifice, belonged to the home of Jesus' apostles, Simon Peter and Andrew. It can't have, though. That wall is from the 2nd or 3rd century. However, the researchers directing the excavation at El Arage, Professor Mordecai Aviam of the Kinneret Academic College and Professor Stephen Notley of Kinneret Academic College and Yeshiva University. But perpendicular to that wall, in a lower archaeological layer, also beneath the apse floor, was another wall, and this remnant actually is from the first century, the time of Yeshua, Jesus, and his apostles. Whether it was actually part of Simon Peter's home, we cannot know, but it's from the right time. The two walls, the one from the second or third century and the one from the first, were revealed when the mosaic floor of the apse was expertly removed by the excavation conservator. Can you believe that? This excavation conservator, his name is Yehoshua Jesus Dre. <laughs> Ultimately, the floor is expected to be restored. I don't think that's a coincidence at all. I think it's giving a giant hint that Jesus was there. <laughs> there are multiple lines of evidence supporting interpretation of El Arage's Bethsaida and the church as St. Peter's Church, a.k.a. the Church of the Apostles. First of all, the Byzantines didn't just build their basilicas anywhere. They were always built with the apse positioned over a sacred relic. Also, Byzantine faith had a fascination with the apostles. The last Christian voice of the late Roman period, 20 years before the beginning of the Byzantine period, was Eusebius writing the Onomasticon in the year 304. Notley points out, and Eusebius cited Bethsaida for one thing, being the home of the apostles not for the healing of the blind man from Mark's gospel or the feeding of the multitudes of which Luke's gospel describes on the outskirts of Bethsaida, but for being the city of the apostles. To my mind, Notley says, his entry in the Onomasticon is a vestige of continuity of Christian memory about the close association of Bethsaida and the home of the apostles Simon Peter, Andrew his brother, 
and Philip described in John 144. What Eusebius wrote, quote, Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter and Philip, it is located in the Galilee on the lake of Gennesaret. Furthermore, this wall's location and the loving care with which the church's builders boxed it in and preserved it suggested it was a sacred relic that the Byzantines venerated this wall. So here's a picture of the venerated wall. Um, there's the second to third century wall, and then there's one that is venerated that goes back to Jesus' day. Revering the wall of a long-gone sacred edifice isn't unknown. The western wall in Jerusalem is venerated as a remnant of the second temple, or at least of the walls surrounding its courtyard. Now archaeologists have found evidence that the Byzantines venerated a wall in a fishing village on the Sea of Galilee in what is today northern Israel. Bethsaida abruptly disappeared from Jewish and Christian historic records in the late 3rd century, possibly because it flooded during a period when the lake level rose. At some point, the memory of this Roman-era Jewish village's location was lost, let alone the memory of sites within it. But maybe those memories were only lost later, perhaps after earthquake devastated the Galilee in the 8th century. Maybe when the Byzantines were searching the area for the sacred sites, the memory of the village and Simon Peter and Andrew's home was still alive. Then there's an aerial view of a 5th century church floor and apse. When in Rome, of all the apostles, Simon Peter holds the predominant position. He was their leader, Notley explains. The apse of St. Peter's Basilica in Rome lies over what their Roman tradition holds to be the tomb of this same Simon Peter. The very Peter whose home may have now been unearthed for what the Byzantines thought was his home together with the drainage system from that home. That is incredible. And let me say right here, they found the ossuary of Simon Barjona, or Barjona, as it said in Hebrew, there on the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem. It was not in Rome. Okay, the venerated wall is beneath the center of the apse. In keeping with the Byzantine tradition for sacred relics, and there isn't anything else there, Avion points out except the other first century wall, but the Byzantines probably never saw that one. By the time they arrived seeking the house of Simon Peter, hundreds of years after the event, that first century wall had probably disappeared under the dirt of ages. The builders didn't know about it. They weren't scientifically rigorous archaeologists, the team points out. In another clue, that the wall served as the basilica's sacred relic, the church wasn't oriented precisely east-west as most Byzantine churches were. Instead, its slightly askew orientation aligns it with the lovingly preserved venerated wall. Centuries later, by which time the memory of Bethsaida's location had faded and presumably blissfully ignorant of what they were doing, the Crusaders would build a sugar factory at the same site, and they even repurposed some of the ancient church walls. The archaeologists are excavating the ruins of that sugar factory, too. 
the Crusaders would presumably have been mortified to realize that their sugar production facility not only sliced through parts of a forgotten ancient basilica just feet from its baptistry, but possibly squatted on top of what early Christian tradition held to be Simon Peter and Andrew's house. Mind you, it might all have been operated by Muslims, points out archaeologist Akia Kohn. Tavor, and we don't know that Christians living here operated the sugar factory. It was probably owned by a crusader, a Frank, but that doesn't mean that they ran it. Yeah, well, Muslims like to cover up Christian relics so they can't be found. But why would the crusaders have built one of their dozens of sugar factories there of all places? Not because of local traditions, but because hot weather and lots of water are basic for growing sugar cane. Today, the site is in the Beteha Nature Reserve and is being excavated with the assistance of the Israel Nature and Parks Authority and the Israel Antiquities Authority. And it gives the scripture, Mark 8, 22. They came to Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him, and his sight was restored. El Araj, on the northern shore of the Sea of Galilee, is one of two archaeological sites that were competing for the title of the real Bethsaida. Recorded in the New Testament is the hometown of Simon Peter and Andrew and also Philip, purported author of the Gnostic Gospel. Excavation began in 2016, almost a century after the Rev. Rudolf de Haas noticed ancient mosaic tiles next to a ruined Ottoman manse. Well, that tells you right there what happened and who covered it up. Discoveries of El Araj in previous years include the church remains of a village from the 1st century BCE to the 3rd century AD and lots of fishing gear, which is what one would expect if one found a Jewish fishing village from the Roman period. Excavation of the church revealed, among other things, three inscriptions, one containing an entreaty to none other than Simon Peter. And in my last video, I told you that they need to correct that because the inscription was about the Messiah, not Simon Peter, but they misinterpreted it. The preponderance of evidence led Notley and Aviam to the conclusion that this was none other than Simon Peter's church, the Church of the Apostles in the village of Bethsaida. The very name El Araj may support the contention that this site and no other was Bethsaida. Notley theorizes El Araj means the lame man, and he postulates that scribes confuse the name Bethsaida, fishing village, with Bethesda, where Jesus healed a lame man in Jerusalem. In the very first Greek Christian manuscripts on Jesus' miracles, confused scribes began to refer to Bethsaida in Jerusalem as Bethsaida, and somehow Bethsaida gained the association with the lame man. We add that excavation of El Araj continued despite the outbreak of war on October 7th and the departure of foreign volunteers who left after the fighting erupted. This season's discoveries include the fact that the church had served for longer than thought as the remaining team dug down, the archaeologists unearthed two stages of the apse. Evidently, the church operated for hundreds of years from the late 5th to the 8th century. And they show the 1st century wall discovered beneath the apse at El Araj. Its protracted operation underscores its importance in the early Christian world. It was important enough that they invented in multiple stages of development and preservation, further supporting the case that El Araj was Bethsaida, home of the apostles. This may not have been the earliest church in the town. Right next to the basilica is a eucalyptus tree, a big one. No, the eucalyptus is not indigenous to Israel. They were imported from Australia with the idea of draining the swamp. 
Uh, let's plant one at the White House. <laughs> starting in the 1880s, and the less said about that, the better. The tree provides shade from the blazing Middle Eastern sun, but more to the point, it's growing atop another ancient structure, which the archeologists suspect may have been an even older church from the fourth century, the earliest days of the Christian Byzantine Empire. Removing any tree in Israel's public domain requires formal governmental permission. Aviam explains, and it's a bureaucratic morass, but if permission to excavate is applied for and granted, and if the structure turns out to be a fourth century church predating the church overlying the venerated wall, then it could attest to very early Christian witness to Bethsaida at that time. Here's an aerial view of the fifth century church apse, the venerated wall and the first century wall. In addition, the mysterious structure under the tree outside the basilica was built on an east-west orientation. In other words, the Byzantines built the earlier church east-west, but when they came to rebuilding the late 5th century church, they chose to align it instead with the sacred wall under the apse, even if it meant not being precisely east-west. Why would ancient Bethsaida have had two churches? Aviam thinks the two didn't operate commensurately. The later one would have replaced the earlier. Tabga, too, a few kilometers west of El Araj, also features a 5th century church standing above a church from the 4th century. It seems that the El Araj church was possibly destroyed by a massive earthquake in the Galilee in the year 749 and was thus forgotten the time of Jesus. The possible discovery of the Apostles' home in early Christian tradition would be one of the most extraordinary finds in Christian archaeology, though proof may remain forever elusive. At least one quest would take Byzantine believers to Bethsaida, hometown of Simon Peter, Andrew, and Philip, and they would have sought the Apostles' house. How was it identified? Perhaps somebody saw an old wall and said, that's it. Sacred and original is not the same. And Aviam adds, this wall is original. So here's the mosaic over the apse. And the next picture is the venerated wall at El Araj. So this is really a cool picture. The archaeologists are not saying that they found the house of Simon Peter. They are saying that they found a Byzantine basilica that goes back earlier than thought to the late 5th century that was built over a venerated wall that the builders presumably thought had belonged to the house of Simon Peter. It didn't, but the wall next to it may have. In any case, what the archaeologists found was evidence of early Christian tradition. From a scientific position, we always have to qualify, Knightley says. There's no inscription saying Peter lived here. His home could have been anywhere in Bethsaida. One cannot assume that hundreds of years after he lived, the Byzantines got it exactly right. There's also the question of when the venerated wall began to be venerated. But the evidence says that the Byzantines were not simply building a church without any memory. There is a persistent memory that underneath the church existed the first century village, 
that is home of the apostles, Simon, Peter, Andrew, and Philip. It gives some credence to the historical witness of the Gospels, where it says, things take place, we have evidence that fits. We didn't dig under the church and find nothing. We found first century homes from the time of Jesus. And that means the Byzantines had a living memory of where the town and the home of Simon Peter and Andrew was and remembered that in the building of a church. How absolutely stunning and awesome. So this very wall that was venerated would not have been venerated for no reason. And definitely could be a wall from their home. So this is really exciting, looking at the pictures of the excavation and the venerated wall. So you know I do a lot of research, and so I decided to type in, does eucalyptus have a biblical meaning? And the answer came back, yes, eucalyptus leaves can represent the tree of life. It's not the tree of life, but it can represent it in the Bible's Revelation 22, 1 through 2. In this verse, John describes a vision of heaven where the tree of life grows by a river of life and its leaves can heal nations. Eucalyptus is known for its medicinal properties and ability to treat wounds and relieve illnesses, which may be why it was chosen to represent the tree of life. So. They're not knowing this at the excavation site about the eucalyptus tree having a biblical meaning, but I'm adding that here in my video because I think it's extremely dramatically important. The biblical meaning of eucalyptus is deeply rooted in its symbolic representation of healing, protection, and divine guidance. Through its aromatic properties and medicinal benefits, eucalyptus serves as a tangible reminder of God's grace and care for his creation. That eucalyptus was planted there for this reason. There's no doubt whatsoever. Uh, eucalyptus was seen as a sacred plant and is a wonderful symbol of strength, protection, and abundance. And Jesus said, I come to give you life more abundantly. Interestingly, for indigenous peoples of Australia, where they believe it came from, eucalyptus is considered the holy tree, representing the division of the underworld, earth, and heaven. Eucalyptus is said to have purifying, cleansing effects similar to sage. And also a potent antimicrobial eucalyptus is a true multi-purpose oil that works against bacteria and viruses, which is why it's so good for colds and other respiratory ailments, as well as fungi. And also a natural anti-inflammatory and antiseptic, which reduces any redness, swelling, and pain while promoting wound healing. So it truly represented that God's grace and his healing for his creation was present there in Bethsaida because the Messiah came to visit his apostles there. And let me finish off by saying that recent updates from the biblical archaeology excavations at Bethsaida, also known as El Arage. In 2019, the team discovered the remains of elaborate mosaic floors. In 2021, the team uncovered more of the church mosaic floors and walls, which indicate the building was around 88 by 52 feet. They also found two inscriptions, one about the basilica's construction and the other about renovations. In 2022, the team discovered a first century wall under the apse, which supports the theory that this is the historic Bethsaida. They also found a complete Greek inscription in the Sacristy, uh, which mentions a church member named Constantine and asks for intercession from the chief and commander of the heavenly apostles. And they say that's a title for the apostle Peter but Jesus is the chief and commander of the heavenly apostles. So 
Why are they misinterpreting that, I wonder? I don't know why they're getting that that's the title for Simon Peter. So, he's, Jesus is the chief and commander of the heavenly army of God. The excavations also revealed a Jewish fishing village from the first century BCE to the first century AD, which Herod Philip later turned into a Roman city called Julius. The name Bethsaida is Aramaic and likely means house of fish. So we see in the scriptures that the Lord told his apostles, I will make you fishers of men. And by the way, there are numerous trees that people call the tree of life, but there really is one tree of life. And you just have to read my book about that. It is so incredible. And um, it's called The Almond Tree, Aaron's Rod, The Messiah, King of Israel, available at olivepresspublisher.com. And it's astounding. You can go there and see all of the things I discuss in the book about archaeological finds and miracles that happened to me that I wrote down, revelations about Jesus. So um, Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee. This is in Matthew 4, verse 18. He saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men and they immediately left their nets and followed him going on from there he saw two other brothers James the son of Zebedee and John his brother in the boat with Zebedee their father mending their nets and he called them and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him and Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sickness. So the eucalyptus is representative of that and all kinds of diseases among the people. Then his fame went throughout all Syria and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various disease and torments and those who were demon possessed, epileptics, paralytics, and he healed them. Great multitudes followed him from Galilee and from Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and beyond the Jordan. So this is really stunning, and I really had to revisit this archaeological find because, you know, I want to keep up with the updates of what they've found there because I truly believe that they're on to something extraordinary with this wall being venerated. Can you imagine if we're looking at the very wall that Jesus may have touched Simon Peter and Andrew and possibly Philip, they saw this very wall with their eyes because they do know that it dates to the time of Jesus. So what could be more relevant than having a wall that basically is telling you with flashing lights, Jesus was here, Simon Peter was here, Andrew was here, Philip was here, and the wall was preserved so lovingly that it did mean something incredible. So, absolutely stunning, don't you think? Uh, please give the video a like to help the algorithm so more people will see it. And thank you for any support of my channel. It's greatly needed and appreciated. And I just pray that the Lord blesses you with this incredible discovery and that it will give you joy in your hearts. And I will see you in my next video. God bless everybody. Have a good rest of your afternoon.